Dana Miller with Hotel News Now. Today I'm joined by Jeff Good, the president of Good Hospitality. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. So Good Hospitality has been in the business for more than 20 years now. Tell us a little bit about how you've seen the industry change and how you and your team are adapting. Well, the, the industry, in my opinion, has changed quite a bit in the last 25 years. Um, I remember when uh, we used to have a, a folio bucket and a phone uh, and uh, used to check in people that way. Today, obviously, it's much different. I think technology, um, the, uh, the, the, the different demands of the consumer, uh, everybody's wanting things faster, uh, nicer, better, um, and then they want to be rewarded for it as well too. So it's it's a much different ball game than 25 years ago, and I think I think it will continue to evolve and change over the next 25 years too. So. And how would you today describe your growth strategy? Uh, for us, we're we're pretty strategic. Um, we, we're right now with, with all of the development that's been going on over the last six, seven, eight years, um, there's probably a lot of markets out there in the United States that haven't been affected. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is, uh, uh, if, we, if we tend to look at a certain market, uh, we're, we, you know, we take a look at wh wh how much product has come in recently, have they opened, has, has that new, all those rooms cycled through the market yet? Um, and then if so, uh, if there is an opening there, what type of brand is it present, represented? Uh, what type of uh, runway is there for you? So I, I think it seems to be there's a lot more analyzing of the markets. Um, and uh, I think, you know, we're, we're brand folks. We, we tend to stay in the brand swim lane. So uh, we're, we're trying to, to see, uh, you know, wh what brands are available um, is, is I, I think it's I think that's what what we tend to look at more or less is that what's gone on in the market what brands are available do they fit with what we're trying to do and uh, you know just basically go from there is, is it a is it a high buried entry market we've been looking at that a little bit more lately uh, some of these markets that uh, are a little bit easier to develop in and buy land in uh, that's usually when uh, you end up with overbuilding and so uh, we, we, we try to steer away from those type of situations, those markets. Can you give some insight into which markets you are looking into mostly? Um, yeah, right now we, uh, uh, we have one under construction now, but we're getting ready to start two uh, uh, select service extended stay brands uh, down in uh, southwest Florida. Uh, and uh, the, the markets that we're looking into are uh, haven't had a lot of new supply come into them for some time. Uh, it's, I know one of the markets is very hard to get uh, good land, uh, so we were able to find something down there. Um, the other one was an opportunity that came with an acquisition that uh, we bought a hotel and had additional land. Uh, and uh, we, we waited for about a year of running the other hotel till we had a good idea uh, of how that hotel was performing, where the consumer was coming from. Uh, so I think at the end of the day, it's, it's sort of fitting that I'm talking to you from Smith Travel Research and Hotel Now is because if, if there's ever a time where analytics and data uh, is more important, and, and, and mind you, these hotels, these select service hotels that six, seven years ago you could build for eight, nine dollars, eight, nine million dollars, now they're 11 to 13 million dollars. Uh, you, you, you have to really be accurate and really be able to uh, churn the information to make sure that you uh, don't miss something that's, that's coming. So. so going off of that, would you say you're more in the business to buy or build right now? Um, I think it's I think it's market specific. I, I think we're all hearing out there and have for the last couple years that construction costs are skyrocketing. Uh, there's a labor shortage out there. Um, you know the new energy code uh, building code came out a couple years ago, which is adding a lot of additional cost. Uh, the brands uh, are all trying to up their game and trying to go with more contemporary uh, type looking buildings with new products and the new uh, emerging type products that are out there and everybody's trying to be the latest and greatest and, and what that does is it continually adds cost to the projects and uh, so I, I think uh, construction is 
for us, it's always viable because we, we build ourselves, we do our own construction. Um, but uh, we've, in the last couple of years, we've done some acquisitions too, which is not normally what we do. But uh, I think you just, I think it's, it's really just a, it's just a function of that individual street corner and, and uh, uh, what's going on in that market. And if the labor situation is as bad, uh, you know, maybe you can maybe you can take it on. Sure. And of course, we know um, Good Hospitality was approved a franchise agreement with Marriott for Spring Hill Suites some time ago. Yep. Are there any more opportunities for franchise agreements you see in the future? Yeah, we, uh, we well, we're, we're actually working on a, a, a Fairfield Inn & Suites. Uh, we're not the franchisor of it, but we're the developer management company. And it's a Fairfield Inn & Suites that will look, it's on a uh, agricultural Amuse it's somewhat of an agricultural amusement park, if you could actually imagine that. Uh, it's called Fair Oaks Farms, and uh, it's one of the largest uh, dairy farms in, in, the, in the country, probably in the world. And uh, we're, we're creating a Fairfield Inn and Suites that looks like a large barn. And it has silo rooms and uh, uh, sort of very, it, it looks like a big barn that's a Fairfield Inn and Suites. So we're working on that. Uh, but yeah, we're always looking for uh, new franchise opportunities with Marriott. We, we pretty much stay in the Marriott Hilton swim lane. We'll, we'll do, we'll look at other third party brands, but I think that, that if to look at those, I think the market's got to be right. Um, so we, we pretty much try to stay in our swim lane. So. And lastly, tell us a little bit about what's on the short-term goal list for a good hospitality. Oh, uh, I don't know. I think for us, it's just we 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 tend to we're a little bit smaller, we're leaner, um, we're always uh, if we're not if we're not working on trying to develop or build a hotel, um, we also manage our own hotels. So uh, one of the big things now is we're we're very focused on uh, trying to create. Uh, uh, good work pathways for our employees. We're trying to reduce turnover. Uh, we're trying to educate on trying to, to, to do rates. So for us, there's always short-term things that, that we have to do. It's not always just development, construction. Um, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in our company having a very low turnover rate for all of our hotels and you know we have we have a, a we feel it's a very large reason for that is because of our company culture trying to find pathways for our people to help grow try to mentor uh, mentor them um, and uh, you know because the hospitality in industry is one of those gateway uh, type businesses for first-time jobs mm -hmm. and if you can uh, uh, get somebody into the into the business and and, uh, and and show them that you know maybe maybe you don't have to check in people all the time all your life or you can clean rooms all your life or whatever that's what we're concentrating on is trying to give people career paths and and then let them know that you can grow within our small organization and but you, these are the things that you have to do to be able to do that so uh, we try to walk walk the talk on that and and that's a lot to do with culture so that's our short-term goals right now uh, we're we're one of our big short-term goals we're gonna roll out here this year is we're gonna be we're created our own uh, it's called GHS good hospitality radio and what we did was we have a setup like what you folks have here and we're uh, live podcasting out to our employees and a lot of senior leadership we we dress up we do character playing it's sort of funny goofy kind of stuff but we roll it all out to all the employees and they all get to see it all at one time and we sort of make fun and do certain things but we're, we're just trying to create that connection with our people to let them know that hey we can be goofy and fun too and and this is a different way of looking at it so we're always trying new things and always trying to uh, figure something out but as as fast as things change in this industry you usually have to pivot turn and reinvent yourself some other way so we're that's that's and I'm sure there'll be something we'll be talking about next year this time too that we wouldn't have thought about this year so uh, that's 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 just I think the nature of the uh, the industry so that's great well yep. thank you again so much for taking your time today Jeff it was well, great thank speaking you. with you it was very nice thank you